Good evening. Welcome to the September 20th, 2016 meeting of the Miller School Committee. Uh, I'll start by announcing that this meeting is being recorded and can be viewed on Mondays at 7 o'clock on Comcast Channel 8 or Verizon Channel 37. Uh, start next with our roll call. I'll go to my left. Sean Dory. Here. Nancy. Here. Steve. Present. Jen. Here. Teacher representative. Here. Hello. Uh, no student representatives. Uh, Denise Gibbons is absent tonight uh, under the weather. And uh, Jody, anybody signed in for open session? No. All right. Then we will move to next item, action items. Uh, consideration to approve the school committee minutes from July 21st. Mr. Chair. Mr. Catalano. I make a motion that we consider to we approve the school committee meeting minutes for 7-21-2016, 7-27-2016, and 8-30-2016. And move. Is there a second? Oh, second, sir. Have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. Um, Next, then, consideration to approve the 2017 trip to Peru. No, we actually have an executive session mark. Oh, yeah. Mr. Chair, I, I, okay. I did a oh, okay. okay. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve the, the school committee executive session meeting minutes for 7-27-2016. Second. And move. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, now we'll move to the 2017 trip to Peru. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Good. I'm Nikki, Spanish teacher in high school. Um, I am looking to bring a group of 27 students next April to Peru. Um, we have had some really exceptional and successful trips with students to both Europe and um, Central America. So this would be the first trip to South America. And um, yeah, the students are very interested and very excited. I said there are 27 students and that would be four chaperones. Um, the breakdown is six boys, rest girls. Um, there are six seniors, <coughs> one freshman, and a huge group of juniors. Um, the, do you all have a copy of this? We do. Okay. So the main, the big point, I guess the highlights, we would fly into the capital of Lima and spend a little bit of time there. And um, one thing that makes this trip really special is the community service component, which we've had little things in the past, um, going to schools, but we haven't really served in this way. So for two days, we're gonna be living um, with an Andean community in little hut houses. Um, and we're going to help them they suggested perhaps building um, a greenhouse, but it could be working on something else. Um, we'll find out when we get there. But so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It seems like it's a great way for the kids to really integrate with um, the community and get into the culture, use their language skills. Um, and so the next thing that, well, it's pretty huge is Machu Picchu. Um, we're gonna spend a couple days there and towards the end of the trip, we're going to Lake Titicaca, which is the largest lake in South America. I think it has the highest altitude. Um, it is probably known for the man-made islands that are created out of reeds, and the natives live on the islands. And we're going to go spend some time there, too. So that's the gist. <laughs> um, do you have any questions? Mr. Chair. Just around the altitude sickness, I was talking to some of the students when I watched the How do you address that for the kids or for yourself? Well, I have been so concerned about global affairs as far as like terrorism. I'm like, thank God we're going here. We don't have to worry about it. And then Zika came, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know. But actually, it's the only country not affected. Not that there's a relationship with kids, but. Um, yeah, so we don't have to worry about mosquitoes there. That's a positive, the high elevation. Um, besides that, it is pretty typical for people to get like an elevation sickness. 
and I think that there, there's something that people take. Um, I don't know the specifics, but I'm just assuming we'll all take it. Um, like when you're flying, you can take things. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but it's definitely uh, like all tourists usually take it because it is a unique experience, very high and difficult. To, you know, it sounds fascinating. Yeah. I like so, Mr. Chair, so the State Department does a country kind of overview of, of all the countries for travel, for American citizens' travel, and I'm not familiar with what they're saying about Peru. Are there any concerns? I don't know if you've done that research yet. If not, we should definitely be able to direct yeah. parents to the State Department, not necessarily yeah. the company, put them to the government agency and let them yeah. review and, and see what, if any, concerns that they have about I haven't heard anything. Yeah, um, no, that's a great idea. I feel I'm familiar with it just because last year was a difficult year with the international problems and we were going to Europe. Um, so there were different alerts with terrorism. But no, right now, I feel like this is a good spot for us to be traveling where there's not too much going on. Um, so it looks good and I'll continue to monitor that. Okay. But, that's a good point. My only question that kind of dovetails on that too is just, is there any, what kind of emergency response is available? Or, or, yeah. if, there, or if it's not, I, I was just glancing quickly through here and I didn't mm -hmm. see anything that said, you know, included, yeah. provided travel is, is travel assist or is so. If, if it's not included in here, that's mm -hmm. another thing that I think would be good to identify. It is included. Okay, it is. Um, this group that I've, I've been working with them for a long time, I don't, maybe six years. Um, I've worked with a couple other companies as well, but we've developed a really good relationship and um, partly why I like to continue this relationship is because I feel really confident as far as should anything happen, any disaster, any child's health or they are totally on top of things. They also have, you know, networks everywhere, not just in states. So um, I like that they have somebody from ACIS will be with us 24-7. Um, I speak the language, but I don't know about culture in Peru. So um, thank God we can count on this person to guide us through it. Question? Oh, good. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I make, an, I make a motion to approve the 2017 trip to Peru um, that leaves or goes from April 13th through April 22nd, 2017. Second. I moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Next, we have uh, consideration to approve the paraprofessional contract, uh, which is going to run from 2016 to 2019. Mr. Chair, this was approved in executive session um, on, uh, at our last meeting, which was August 30th. Yeah. Um, just a couple of the highlights. Mm -hmm. um, the cost of living adjustment is 2% uh, two, two, two each year for the next three years, um, which is uh, within uh, our normal uh, growth rate of, of revenue and aid um, from, from the state and the town. Anybody have any other questions? Mm -hmm. We have to, uh, we have to Mr. Yeah. Chair. Mr. Callahan. I make a motion to approve the power professional contract um, that will covers, cover 2016 through 2019. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain, Jody. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. The next. Next is consideration 
the votes required for a transfer for uh, land for the MSBA project. Mr. Um, Chair, I ask that the, uh, the representatives from Compass Project Management uh, join us to kind of give us an overview prior to the motion. Okay. And this is, um, well, be part of, is part of the process uh, as we lead up to the November town meeting there will be a warrant article uh, in front of the town to approve, uh, technically I guess approve the, that we request the state legislature to then approve uh, this land transfer. So, uh, thank you, Mark. My name is uh, Jeff Danica. I'm with Compass Project Management, the uh, owner's representative. Uh, working with the school and the town to uh, help bring you guys a new school at the elementary school. Uh, as Mark noted, yeah, there are many steps involved in this process to get us from the beginning to the end where you can open up your doors to a new school. The next major step in front of us is to tee up the land transfers that will happen uh, both with a town meeting vote in November and then a submission that goes to the legislators in January to then be uh, shepherded through that state process. So the plan I have before you today uh, is a color rendering of the way that the different parcels are chopped up on the existing campus. Um, what you'll see in, in faint colors from where you're sitting is where we are today in the middle school, high school, is uh, parcel 21, there's a gray outline of the existing building. And then here between parcels 118 and 18 is a light shaded, uh, rep uh, light shaded representation of the Clyde Brown existing school. All the colors you see here represent the municipal campus, which is comprised of varying entities within the town of who owns which and who controls which. So all these colors here are town parcels. What the purple represents is uh, municipal, which is general use parcels. So that's the town hall under 116. And then about two thirds of the soccer field on 119 are technically uh, town general use parcels. All the ones in gray here are believed to be schools, so that's Sisto Field, uh, the majority of the Clyde Brown School, the half of the parking lot in the back, the backstop there, and all the middle school and then the uh, high school playing fields and the uh, wooded areas believed to be school, but we'll, we'll circle back to that in a moment. Um, the items in green here, which is the all parcel 20 and parcel 18, are believed to be, after town council did deed research for us, um, to be under protected under the parks uh, regulations and it's subject to article 97 uh, review and so what we need to do there in conjunction with the town is to transfer the land and make a swap if you will to provide a, a footprint for our future Clyde Brown school so through the uh, spring and fall um, the building committee along with uh, several community forums decided on where the new school will go um, I'll show you that and I'll circle back to this plan so the new school is, uh, is proposed to go adjacent to the existing school. So here's Clyde Brown in white, and this is the existing middle high school. Um, so between the two schools, up on the wooded uh, knoll, as it's known, would be where the new school is going. Approximately the geometry it's shown in dark uh, red there. So as you saw on the slide before, there's a lot of different entities and ownerships in there. What we're looking to do here is to carve out a building footprint uh, where we can build our new school. And so we need to carve that out of the land that's currently protected um, from parks. And so the area in red with the driveway in off of Park Road and then taking all of 18 and carving out a section of 20 is the area that we would like to take out of uh, the park's control and give to the school. And swap for that, what we're offering back, um, should it get through all the approvals, is the Sisto Field, the backstop area, uh, soccer field, and then the wooded uh, wetlands area as well as some of the meadow plant, uh, practice fields in this area here. So none of the uses will change in those green zones. It's simply an internal transfer of ownership from one town hat to another. Uh, unfortunately, we have to go through these steps just because of the way it was transferred prior, uh, since 1955 when it was given to the Parks Department from the School Department. We're now kind of reversing that and swapping around other entities within town. Everything shown here in color, whether it's beige, red, green, will still all be ultimately town-owned, but it's just which hat the town's wearing as it relates to the actual parcelization. So what's going to be before the town at fall town meeting is roughly this plan, which is to offer up the areas in green for the taking in red. And the reason for that is that 
generally the uh, Energy and Environmental Affairs Office uh, from the state would like to see a, a two to one replication and they also want to see our replication in kind. So we initially offered up the three playing fields and that was a pure one to one stop uh, swap and what the EEA requested back was we'd like some more land and as well as we'd like to see some land that's kind of similar in terms of its nature. So the existing nature of the area we're taking is a wooded area. And since the area down here is a wooded area and a wetlands, it doesn't provide much use for the schools today, but does meet the needs of what the EEA would like us to provide to them. So the proposal before you tonight is to modify the swaps from just these three parcels to add in uh, you know, approximately 40% or, or so of parcel 53, and then a small chunk of, uh, of parcel 21. Ultimately, at the end of this process, should everything go smooth at town meeting with the EEO, the final parcelization will look something like this. So the area in green here would be ultimately what is under the Parks Department control through the Board of Selectmen. And the area in red would be the new parcel for the Clyde Brown. And the area in brown would be the remaining parcel for the Middle High School. And important to note, these two would be like uses. They'd both be controlled by school, but for graphical purposes, I've called them differently just so it was easier for you guys to digest. What that looks like on an aerial map, um, because we're all used to seeing textures, is to uh, overlay that area here. Again, the, those same shapes of that wetland and the wooded area with the uh, playing fields uh, for practice, uh, the soccer field, the backstop, uh, Sisto field, and this middle spot is the remaining existing portion of Parcel 20 that will stay under parks control. So the areas in red dashed would represent what's given to the control of the parks department. Everything not dashed would be under the school control department. Could I ask one question? Just sure. More, I, I think I know what it is, but in the field behind the Clyde Brown, that extension out to Main Street, that's right. a walkway, that's not a road, right? Uh, this this spot here? Yeah. Yeah, that's a walkway. So there's, yep. there's, there's six fingers or so, some of them are pathways for vehicles, some are not. There's, these two are walkways, this is a vehicle, this is a vehicle, this can be a vehicle, vehicle and a vehicle. Um, so there are varying numbers of, uh, of, of tentacles. I thought the house behind the Clyde Brown was already town controlled. Correct. It's town control, but not parks control. So oh, a, I see. There's a nuance there that uh, right now it's deemed general municipal, so uh -huh. it's controlled for any use the town may have. We'd give it to the use of the parks use, which would be a different designation. My other question is to the, the area down at the bottom right hand, the woody, grassy, watery area. Sure. Um, we spent a number of years trying to get fields here in town. Would that affect any future attempt to build fields up at that uh, up at the middle high school uh, campus? So you're referring to yes, just this section, not not the master plan that looked at reorientating the baseball diamonds and the Right. And the track. You're talking about this, the soft space. Well, there. I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how, how if that impinges on, on the plan. I would just point out that we are, we are talking about just the border of the wetlands on the left there, not any of the buffer. So in, in, to answer your question, no, it doesn't impinge on any, because you can't develop in the wetlands anyways. So what we're talking about transferring on that left there is strictly the border of the wetland. No right. buffer, no buffer zone or anything else that allows you to develop. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Do you have any questions? Yes. Um, you, you want a motion? Yeah, I'll take it. Jody? I will, I, I will, I can send this, I can type Debbie this up and send it to you because it is very specific. It's very specific because it's going to, it's for the state. Okay. So if you want to write it, you can, but I can. Send it to you. I'll send it to you. Mr. Chair, I'm going to make two motions okay. because, and I'll explain why I'm making two motions, because there is a question on, can you, Jeff, can you put the map where the numbers are? Just go back to the graphical map with the numbers. So there's a question on whether 53 is truly school controlled. It's on, it's on the paper as town controlled. But we've also found other other school controlled lands that were said it said town, but they truly were 
school. Okay. So I'm going to make two motions. Because we have, we have council now looking into Yes. The so we're going to vote. And so one will cancel out depending on who is the true ownership. But this is the la we need to do this prior to the selectmen on Thursday. Okay. So it'll be contingent. Well, but will so that gonna, answer be found by Thursday? I don't, I don't think they're going to have it by Thursday. So we're going to do the same thing with the selectmen. We're going to have two motions. That you, as, you, as you hear, the motion is sort of basically sort of saying if it is, you're approving something, if it is under your control, they'll approve it. If it is under their control, one of them will cancel out once we find out. Continue, Secretary. Yeah. Yes, okay. We're good? Go okay. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we authorize the transfer of parcels 11, 19, and a portion of 21 as, de as depicted on the plan entitled Proposed plan, proposed land swap, dated 9-14-2016, to the Board of Selectmen, acting as the Board of Park Commissioners for the purpose of effecting the Article 97 transfer necessary to allow the siting of the new Clyde Brown School. Second. Been moved and seconded. Further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chair. Okay. The second motion is... I, ought, uh, I make a motion to authorize the transfer of a portion of parcel 53 as noted above should town council determine said parcel is under school control. Second. Uh, actually, what I have to continue. To, so that would be transferred to the board of selectmen acting as the board of park commissioners for the purpose of effecting the Article 97 transfer necessary to allow the siting of the new Clyde Brown School. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Would, would, would for the ease of your records, would it be good for me to put this in an email and send it to one of you guys to send it a little That would secretary? be perfect. That would be very helpful. Because you don't send it things over until tomorrow, right? I usually, well, I can send it at any time. I usually like to do it the next day just so I can. Yeah. I but we took the vote. I don't mind writing it out now. Oh, you. If you, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Is this, based on our conversations with town council, is this going to be sufficient enough for going into Thursday night? I think it yes. is. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. We good? Yeah. Um, it's really getting sufficient enough to go to town meeting, too. Um, okay. Well, please, we won't get authorized until the next meeting. So what I capture in here tonight. We took two votes, and then depending on what the opinion from town council, what, whether we have to do the 53. Yeah. I, I would yeah, suggest her point was just that it becomes official at your next meeting when you vote okay. to That's right. That's right. We'll have, okay. we'll have, we'll have it before town meeting. Right. Yes. yes. We'll make everything legal. That's, that's correct. Okay. okay. We're good. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to take a second to thank you guys. I don't think you've been to our meetings in public since this process, or maybe one at the most, but the amount of time and service you guys have been providing to the employee school, the elementary school building committee, and to us behind the scenes has been tremendous and thank you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Very dedicated employees. Thank you. They do a lot of dedicated help on the town side as well. Uh, Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, all right. I'm going to grab this and I'll move in. Perfect. Uh, no students again. Teacher representatives. Good evening. At the Clyde Brown School, September 25th, the Homeschool Association will be sponsoring the Clyde Brown Run Back to School. On September 26th, the Scholastic Book Fair will happen all day long at the Clyde Brown School. So I have a note here that says it's October 6th, so perhaps it's running through the 26th to through the 6th. Um, the first grade open house will be on September 26th from 6 p.m. until 7 p.m. The third grade open house will be on the same evening, September 26th from 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. On September 28th, grade two open house will be from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Grade four open house will be from 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. And on October 3rd, the kindergarten open house will occur from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Clyde Brown. 
October 20th will be picture day all day at Clyde Brown School. In the middle school, the book group has held signups for grades five through eight. It continues to go on. Um, their first meeting will be at the school library on Tuesday, October 11th. And it will occur at 2.30 p.m. You can see Mrs. Dimmer to sign up. And the middle school open house is this Thursday, um, September 22nd, beginning at 7 p.m. The high school had their open house last week. They have an inauguration meeting for parents and students this Thursday evening. That's for the trip going to the inauguration in January. And that meeting will occur at 6 p.m. The um, teachers involved are Miss Yemba and Miss Revel. We have had the Dutch Exchange students here this week, and um, they delivered an interactive presentation on Monday to the student body. They compared and contrasted the education in Dutch and American cultures. And um, they also participated in an amazing race on Saturday that was run by high school volunteers. Representative Kennedy's youth cabinet met here in Mills this past Saturday. And Mills has two students serving on Kennedy's cabinet. They are seniors James Schultz and junior Grace Steve. Next week is Spirit Week at the high school, and that's hosted by the student council. And next Tuesday, September 27th, is also, also National Voter Registration Day. And Missy Emma is running a voter registration drive all week after school. Thank you very much. That is the superintendent's report. Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. we have had um, a very good opening to the schools. We have 60 students who are new to the Millis Public Schools, having moved here from elsewhere. 20 at the Clyde Brown, 23 at the Middle School, and 17 at the High School. Overall, and our enrollment is down from last June by 41 students in district, and five fewer students are going out of district. We currently have 70 choice students, and we will continue to uncover more. Uh, we want to once again let parents know that if you move out of Millis, you just need to let us know your address, but because you have a spot, um, your students, your children have a spot as students in the Millis Public Schools, you are allowed to continue as choice students, and that is beneficial financially to the district, so just let us know of your change of address. All elementary classes are in the 18 to 21 student range, with most of them 17 to 18. We uh, did learning walks at the elementary school this morning and got into first, second, and third, and fourth grade classes and were very impre impressed by what we saw. We have nine English language learners, four from Brazil, two from Italy, one from Haiti, one from Russia, and one that speaks Arabic. We welcome them. We also welcomed our Dutch exchange students this week. We've had uh, a full day of professional development on August 29th, the first day back for, for teachers, focusing on universal design for learning. And a follow-up day on September 14th, you have some handouts in your packet to refer to that um, where teachers are using the CAST website and the principles of U universal design for learning to design project-based learning units. And um, at Clyde Brown, they're taking their, one of the new science units, uh, next generation science units are aligned to the next generation standards and incorporating project-based learning as well as um, increasing goal setting um, by the students. So the it's been excellent professional job embedded professional development. Uh, the grants, the federal entitlement grants that uh, we receive are uh, overall a couple of thousand dollars more than last year, not a, a large gain, and we will be getting our circuit breaker numbers soon. 
in special education. We have 183 students with individualized educational plans, which is 13.6% of our population. 18 of these are out of district placements, and that is five fewer than last year. Uh, one graduated, one student graduated, four returned to the district. Uh, we did have one student move in to Millis this week with an out of district placement as well. Uh, our school safety task force has met twice with the acting police chief, fire chief, school resource officer, and school personnel to um, further uh, uh, discuss and address the safety um, precautions and protocols and procedures that we have in place and we are moving forward on several of those recommendations. So overall there has been a lot going on and I'd like to introduce the new Director of Operations. We are um, very pleased to have John Engler join our staff <coughs> and uh, John comes to us from, with 20 years <coughs> of experience as the Facilities Director at the Xfinity Center and has Prior to that, more years of experience managing facilities at um, the old Gillette Stadium. And uh, we, John's been doing an excellent job, so I'd like to invite him to come up and give us a little update of what he's been up to in the past couple of weeks. Doing well, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, it's been an interesting past three weeks, that's for sure. Um, learning both schools. Um, I have been meeting up with, uh, I was able to meet up with the chief of uh, fire as well to go over some protocols to uh, discuss our um, communications and uh, see where we can enhance that if possible. Uh, learning, uh, meeting with the staff trying to find out everyone's needs, understand the regular process of the football schools. Um, it's, been a, uh, it's been a challenging couple of weeks, uh, but at the same point, um, still meeting contractors, still meeting, uh, uh, besides contractors, uh, reaching out to uh, other vendors that we deal with, and um, just introducing myself, pretty much finding out what we get from them, and uh, hopefully if do some cost comparison later on down the road. It's been, uh, it's been interesting. It's, it's been very nice. Uh, everyone's been, been greeting me with open arms, so I'm not quite sure when that, when that honeymoon will end, <laughs> but uh, hopefully it will continue. Welcome. Thank you. Any Mr. Chair, I, I will not put you on the spot now, but at some point, after you have finally kind of had enough time to kind of review both buildings and what's going on, I would like to have uh, John back to the to the school committee to kind of give us an overview of the state of the buildings. And clearly, one building is in a different different place than this other building. But it would be very helpful for us to know your fresh eyes and your perspective on the state of these buildings and what we need not just in the short term or immediate, but also what are we what are we looking at long term around building facilities. We don't have a lot of money, so we have to be very strategic and plan and be thoughtful about how we approach things. But um, at some point in the next few months after you've really had a good opportunity to kind of learn the ins and outs of the buildings and, and walk them yourselves. But you know, I'd like you to come back and give us an overview of the buildings. And expand it beyond the kind of physical or capital needs, just also staffing, maintenance, just uh, kind of all of what, what's going to be. think we have enough of, where are we short on things, is there things that we can shift and how to cut it out. Basically a capital plan and, a, and ideas for maintenance, because I think that's one of the long things, especially with this building, um, that need to make sure we're staying on top of, or at least we're aware of what we're 
selectively choosing to not address immediately if anything. Uh, Welcome, John. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, up next, um, insurance report wants to. We had mentioned at our last meeting that we would we would do this review the articles that we submitted. Um, all of these were submitted to the Board of Selectmen, um, all 12 that we had uh, voted last time. Since our last meeting, I was able to get a hold of exactly what right now is on the warrant. I emailed everybody this afternoon mm -hmm. so that people could review. I, I think it was fairly evident that, that the articles that what articles have been submitted and what the selectmen have put on um, really are not a lot of capital needs. Um, there's one, I think really only one capital need and that was actually a or capital request and that was actually a citizen's petition, not a department. Um, so unlike past Novembers when um, many things were put up for capital I'm going to only use an example is, you know, the police cruiser, so it's not a police cruiser up there. Those kind of routine revolving requests aren't there. Um, so they really honed it to uh, emergent needs uh, and non budgetable needs stuff. So in looking at that, from my perspective, I think it's probably two things that, that would be consistent with what is currently on the warrant. Uh, probably the, the Clyde Brown roof analysis and repair uh, and the replacement of the intercom uh, because that was tied to the after action report. The Clyde Brown roof analysis, I spoke to Nancy earlier today, um, we're still holding out on the last minute tweet. We have to make sure we have prevailing wage in our bid. So, probably worth leaving that on. Um, if we do get a final number between now and then, we can always uh, acknowledge to the Finance Committee that we would request dismissal and we'll take care of it ourselves. Um, but the other items on here that are becoming annual in nature uh, probably would be better suited for men. Um, so, I guess I would open that up. My my recommendation would be that we take a, a vote to request the selectmen not put on this list items one through five <coughs> and seven through ten and number twelve. If those all be removed from our request. Uh, they're going to entertain our list on Thursday evening. So they haven't voted one way or the other on anything we put forward. Uh, they're doing that on Thursday, so this would be a good opportunity for us to um, pair that down if we choose to, and then go forward with the other two. Can you say that again? What your thoughts were? I would leave. I would leave the roof repair, and I would leave the intercom, and, and everything else. I would. I think is more in line with what. They've now shifted to only in that. Mr. Chair, I go back to what our, our conversation on August 30th that if the roof repair is less than 25 or at 25,000, I think we should self fund that. Um, I, I'm in favor of leaving it on in case the prevailing rage puts it way over the top. But I, I would like to. After that one, that we're ready to pull that off, as you said, I, 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 I'm in favor of that as well. Yeah, and I think it, it wouldn't necessarily be need to be pulled off as much as if they put it on Thursday night, then it just stays. If, if it then gets we submitted to the finance committee, we just request of the finance committee that they recommend a dismissal sure. due to the fact that we've got a final bid and that we'll be taking care of it out yeah. of our own I'm, resources. I'm supportive of that. And I'm supportive of keeping on the intercom. That was tied, as, as, as the Board of Selectmen, Mr. McCaffrey, asked us 
what are we going to do? He goes, we have an after action report, we have to do something. Well, this is something that they can do. The other piece was mostly policy and operations. This is more of a, a, a capital need mm -hmm. that for a system that, to be clear, the system does work, it's clunky, and if it goes down, it takes a while to get it back up. But we're not without an intercom system, but clearly one that could be replaced and upgraded. Is that fair? Correct. I do not think, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, the 12,000 is really a repair number, not a replacement number. I think if we were to replace, it would be significantly more expensive. So let's keep it as a repair. Yeah, me. so I should just say repair of the intercom. Yes. Mr. Chair? Mr. Catalan. Okay. I, I, I make a motion that we remove articles 1 through 5, 7 through 10, and 12 on the previously agreed upon list from the August 30th meeting, leaving Article 6, which is the Clyde Brown roof analysis and repair in the amount of 25000 and leaving on the repair of the intercom phones in middle school classrooms in the amount of 12000 Second. Okay. Um, I, I think we also have a couple of options in terms of one of the idea we talked about too is keeping these things in the forefront of people's minds. I think, uh, well I know that this list was also passed on to the Finance Committee last week. Um, so they've already seen it. Um, we also, there's nothing stopping us from taking the full list and including it as a handout at town meeting to say here are the things that um, we didn't put on but are still needs and will be needs going forward. Mr. Chair, I guess just a few things about that. I totally agree with the handout. This is a clear picture of what we need. Before our May town meeting, though, we're having a special town meeting for Clyde Brown and changes there. And so I think um, going into that meeting, we need a clear picture of what the need is for that school and what the option is if we're preferring to build a new school. We also have this list. These are some of our needs. And then Mr. Angler is working on an assessment of our needs. So we need a clear picture for the voters of everything yep. we need. And Clyde Brown's immediate, but what's our timeline for the rest of these items? Yeah, well, I mean, our timeline is if we put them up in May, these plus others that we, that will either come up or that we have already edited off this list. We, I think, you know, as part of our, I think we had, have had some capital piece, and especially like the auditorium items here. Um, I think it would be helpful to know if we don't, I think, we have or we just put it on here um, exactly the, the status of them and, and do we is it do we need it today do we need it um, we also had some conversations um, prior to the time, former town administrator leaving about are these things something that we should be having joint discussions with uh, and jointly funded or, or funded as not a school item versus a you know, municipal department item, but given the fact that this is audio video, right? The meeting. audio video town meeting and other and any other you know, large mm -hmm. public meeting, all large public meetings are held in, in the auditorium. Uh, that they're really so that piece of the conversation, I think. Mr. Chair. We, we also, as part of the MSBA process, we do have the cost of doing nothing. We actually have legitimate cost, and it is in the millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And that would just be on the total upgrade. Right. It doesn't mean we have to do it overnight, but there's a phasing there. So, I mean, we do have that cost, and that's a, that's a, a strategic conversation that we need to have in the run-up of that process next for that special time meeting and special election of how do we frame this conversation? Right. But we do have those costs. We do have the overall costs, and then we can right. piece it down. Right. Taxpayers want to know the impact of their wallet and the benefit of the cost of things. So we might be 
at the end are used for life for other items beyond the ground and beyond what's on this list. Mr. Chair, may I make one slight correction for number 11? It, there are um, some high school classrooms that might need repair or areas in the high school area downstairs here that um, need uh, need an intercom that currently don't have one. So it reads currently as middle school classrooms. I'd like to expand that to high school and high school areas. Yeah, I think so. Do you need to uh, amend my motion or do I have to do a motion? I'm amending my motion to include high school classrooms and areas on item 11. Okay. Did you all vote? No, yeah. we haven't. Okay. Any other comments, questions? No. All, right. all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Right. Motion carries. Mr. Chair, I'm just curious, Mr. Doherty, what, what your concerns are on our conversation, just so we can understand your perspective. And oh, I think that. These are items that need to need to be done, and I think that we keep playing a game where we don't put things on that are desperately needed. And I think that the more we get it in the public view of these repairs that are needed, the better off we'll be. Yeah, I, yeah. I think we agree with you. We're just following the the timeline of how the town's tackling. Do as you please, and I'll do as I please. All right, next is subcommittee report, school building committee. Anything more than what we... Um, there is a meeting next Wednesday in town at the MSBA. In Boston. Yes, in Boston, which is a follow-up to the August meeting where they, we presented, the, P, the PSR was presented. That was the meeting that Nancy presented, as well as TAPE. And that will be... Um, they, they listed a bunch of questions, which is part of the process and wasn't specific to us. We have answered those questions in the process of answering those questions, and then this becomes uh, a vote of the Facilities Assessment Committee, Facil yes, Facilities Assessment Committee, which basically is the subcommittee that moves it forward and puts it in line for the full, the full vote. Or the, this may be the full vote. There's a there's another vote that has to take place next week, and then and they looked favorably upon our application and our answer of their questions. Um, so this is just part of the process. It is every every applicant has to go through it, and we are in we're we're making motion in that in that direction. Other than that, but clearly the 97 um, the article 97 is uh, an issue. Um, there will be a, at a minimum, one community forum prior to town meeting, um, which will outline and give the residents an opportunity to come in and ask questions, and basically a public forum. And there will be literature that will be pre will be written up and presented as well. Okay. One of those at one of our October meetings too. Is there any idea when that might be? We have not set a date yet. We we're we're, we're going to work on that soon. Okay. And we can have, we'll have the forum, but we can also do the presentation here as well as we've done in the past. Yeah, and we can that do sense. that on either the 18th or November 1st. Um, realistically, I'm thinking mm -hmm. it's That's November fine. 1st. That's fine. That was it, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, correspondence, we have a letter from the Charles River Corral, uh, who has grown out of our auditorium. Um, so they will be um, not utilizing the auditorium for the conference this year. Uh, however, they, are, they own the, the risers in the auditorium. So they're right now leaving them 
here um, as they decide what they're going to do for them. The last comment is in here is if we'd be interested in accepting a donation. Um, I would certainly be willing to accept a donation. Um, and Mr. Cherry yeah. did check with the music and um, department and we would be um, very pleased to accept their donation of risers and appreciate their generosity in doing so. We also will miss having their performances in our auditorium and they, um, Brooks Coral, when I met with him, was very um, gracious and insistent that he was, uh, they all were very grateful to us over the years, but they, our stage is just too small now. I spoke with him as well at the yeah. at the um, scrimmage. He does the football, but, so yeah. I was yeah. filling him in on some stuff. And he, he's very um, sad to go, but he said there's just no room. Next on uh, then school committee announcements, Jen. No. Steve. No. I don't have any. Sean. No thing. All right. Um, we don't have any other business, but we do have uh, executive session for the purpose of contract negotiations. For the custodians and transportation uh, unions for their 2016 to 2019 contract. We will not be returning to open session, so I will entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, Mr. Carroll, I make a motion that we, we move into executive session not to return to open session for contract negotiations for the custodians um, and transportation contracts. Second. Roll call vote. Second. Roll call vote. Sean? Yes. Um, yes, Steve? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you all very much. Have a good night.